I am excited to meet some really wild characters. Wild World of Animals is here to introduce us to just some of the amazing creatures that will be featured at this weekend's Allegheny Outdoor Sports Show. Show manager Chris Fosnacht is here along with Grant Kremer of Wild World of Animals. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. And Chris, this is the 33rd year for the Outdoor Sports Show. It's our 33rd year in Monroeville bringing the great outdoors indoors and we have a uh, gigantic selection of vendors from Canada to Alaska to Africa and not just fishing and hunting but uh, all sorts of uh, various types of pursuits. You don't have to be a fisherman or a hunter. You can go on phot photographic safaris, you can go on cool. eco kayak fishing tours literally around the world. So for people who haven't been to the outdoor, the Allegheny Outdoor Sports Show before, um, what kind of vendors are there? We have tourism vendors, of course, fishing, hunting, camping, boating, but also a lot of uh, different uh, associations and organizations like the Fish and Game Commission that will both have seminars on Saturday and Sunday to address uh, concerns from people from the Commonwealth, too. And again, it's at the Monroeville Convention Center. Right, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And this has to be one of the most exciting things at the uh, sports show. Definitely is, and uh, I think he likes me. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. And Greg, you're with the Wild World of Animals, so tell us about what you guys do at the Outdoor Sports Show. We actually have a variety of animals there, which will range from reptiles into birds and mammals. Things like Serenity here, which is a two-toed sloth, definitely one of the strangest animals in the entire animal kingdom. That goes without saying. All kinds of different things. We'll have many animals on display, but we'll also do shows during the day mm -hmm. um, at a couple different times. And in the show, there'll be probably about 12 different animals, about a 30 minute presentation, things that actually are not on display uh, for the uh, different times of the shows or during the times of the shows. <laughs> it's so interesting. So, you and your wife own the wild world of animals, Correct. you and Jamie. Um, and, and you uh, operate in southwestern Pennsylvania. Yes, although we do travel all over the country. I mean, we do tons of stuff in New York, like most of the television shows that mm -hmm. you see from the late night show and the Today Show when you see animals on there. It's usually us. Wow. Yeah. And you have over 200 animals? <laughs> over 200 animals, which once again ranges from everything you can imagine. You know, the big carnivores, bears, wolves, which, you know, we'll have some of those animals on display, uh, the big cats, primates, birds of prey. Strange animals like this, <laughs> you know, just about everything you can imagine. <laughs> that's so interesting, and it's fascinating that it's right here in Western PA. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about this two-toed sloth. Well, Serenity is a little over 20 years of age, which is a pretty old girl. I mean, the oldest recorded one was 40, but that's really an anomaly. Right. Uh, so at 20, this poor thing, you know, most of her teeth are worn down. Oh. So, uh, which, which is why we give her foods that she can kind of gum herself with there. And of course, everything they do in life is upside down. You know, they sleep upside down, they give birth upside down, made upside down, spending just about all of their time in trees. Although once a month they come down to the ground and go to the bathroom. Once a month? Once a month. That's all, just once a month they have to go. I should point out though, that is in the wild. Okay. She goes about every other day. Oh, I okay. wish that she wild. went once a, <laughs> uh, once a month. With her, it does not work that way. Probably because she has a, you know, much richer diet than she would have in the wild. And strangely enough, and this is kind of hard to believe, as slow as they are and as methodical as they are when they move, they're actually good swimmers. Really? Yeah, in the flooded season in the Amazon, they'll just kind of drop right out of a tree into the water, you know, have to kind of pa doggy paddle over to the next tree. Cecropia leaves are one of their favorite foods, so that's typically where you'll find them is up in a cecropia tree. It's interesting that you say that. I've, I've been watching Planet Earth, too. Yeah, fantastic. And, and they were showing how the sloths will swim yeah. to find a mate yeah. across the river. So yeah, very crazy, interesting crazy stuff. stuff. And Serenity here, she was the referee for this year's Puppy Bowl, believe it or not. The, the puppy bowl that was on TV? Yeah, yeah, Get yeah. out! Oh, yep, you recognize her? <laughs> now that I'm upside down. Yeah, I, now, <laughs> yeah, now you down, recognize her. Yeah, now yeah, I and can she, see her. She, she took her refereeing duties uh, very seriously. So. Well, I'm really excited to see who else you brought with you as well. Yes, our next animal is from the same area, that being South America, just like our sloth here, mm -hmm. and probably equally as strange. So I'm going to step out, Okay. and we're and going to meet... We can give you the times of their shows. Right, yeah, while, while they're getting the other animal out, why don't you tell us a little bit more about the shows? Yeah, their shows will be at 3.15 and 6.30 on Friday, 12 noon and 4 o'clock Saturday, and 12.15 and 3.15 on Sunday. Okay, I imagine this has to be one of the more popular uh, stops at the Allegheny Outdoor Show. It absolutely is. I mean, their display at the show is almost 5,000 square feet. If it gives wow. you an idea of how many Just animals the they bring, yeah. then they go on stage like they are now. And that's when we have literally three, four hundred children and families that come just to see them. I can imagine. You want to get up close and personal. Now, can I 
Can I touch? I actually no. can't let you touch. Yeah, just no, because, that's fine. Yeah, it's okay, and it, it's probably I, not I an animal. I would be worried yeah, to, you, to touch her anyway. It's an animal you have to touch, uh, touch very carefully. Right. Now this is Mick Jagger. Get it? Oh my Mick Jagger. goodness! Very clever. I know. That is clever. Yeah. And yeah. this, of course, is a prehensile <laughs> tail porcupine. Okay. This is a porcupine like the sloth that spends most of his time up in trees. Mm -hmm. Hence this tail, which prehensile means it can kind of wrap around things, using it like an extra hand. And of course, being a porcupine, all these lovely quills, which are basically modified hair, just like what's on your head, uh -huh. except much stiffer, with a point at the end and barbs going all the way up the shaft. So basically, when the porcupine quill enters the skin of you know a potential predator. It'll just keep going deeper and deeper if it's pushed. Oh, wow. And obviously, she likes some dried fruit. Yeah, this is one of the favorite things banana chips. It's a nice, healthy diet, but, uh, you know, very sugary still, which, just like us, most animals and mammals in particular, They'll go for it. love the sugar and the fat. So you have to be very careful in a captive situation to feed them the good things. So these work well. And so, did you say, does she hang upside down by the tail? Not necessarily hang upside down, but as, as he is moving through oh, the trees. Sorry, oh, no, it's okay. He doesn't take it personally. As, he, <laughs> as he's, you know, moving. I'm in the line of fire, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say, if you yeah. want to move back over well, here. Well, they, they, here's something very important to point out. They've yeah. feeding them. They do not shoot their quills. They don't. They okay. do not. That's only in cartoons. Car and and oh. trust me, lots of people think that. But in reality, what this animal would do if it felt threatened is it would raise these quills up, and he would, especially with that tail, take that tail, and he would actually whip with that tail too. Or, you know, just kind of jump sideways, back and forth, you know, just in, in you know, these quills, they easily detach. So, and. Now, I don't, want, I don't want you to get hurt, but is there oh, any no, no, way you can, um, like, adjust him so the people at home can see his tail a little bit sure, more? Sure, sure. I can just kind of bring him yeah, over a little is, bit like there, and you'll see how. Th this is, and this is the only place where he does not have quills. <laughs> He's, <not making laughs> He's it like, easier. actually, no, please don't touch me right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, I'm eating my banana chips. Leave me alone. And I totally, I totally get that feeling. Yeah. When I'm eating, give me my space here. And, um, and he has a rodent, by the way. I want to point out as well. A lot of people don't realize how numerous rodent species are on this planet. Literally, one out of four mammal species on this planet is some type of rodent. Really? Yeah. He has the huge incisors on the front of his mouth that are just like these giant chisels, which grow constantly. Therefore, he has to chew on things to actually wear them down. Interesting. You enjoy your snack. He's cute snack. though, isn't he? He is. Yeah. He's really cute. Okay, I know Jamie has been helping you kind of get your your wife, yep. uh, and so she is going to bring us the next one. And who's up next? This little guy coming out is a very cute crocodile. Oh. Hold on, I'm going to grab him real quick. Did you say that when he said cute? <laughs> you have to say cute. <laughs> Well, as far as crocodiles go, he doesn't yeah, get I much guess, cuter. I guess. And this one I can actually let you touch. Okay. Well, once uh -huh. Beetlejuice here. Are you once sure? You, Feisty. Yeah. And his name is Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice here. Oh, Are you sure you want me to touch him? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> two seconds, he calms right down. Okay. Hi. Just don't say he feels like shoes. That's Ooh. the only thing. Now, what is really that noise he's making? That hissing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's saying I heard off? it then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that's probably pretty self explanatory. <laughs> so. Now, he does make other sounds. There's kind of a little uh sound that he'll make because he is still quite young. He is just uh -huh. a little over a year of age. And that uh sound is a sound that he would make to call his mom. And if mom was close by, <laughs> he would, would hear a much louder hiss, and it might be followed with some very sharp teeth as well. I, I can, I get it. Okay. The crocodiles, of course, most people think of them as big, giant animals, but this crocodile, full grown, be about four feet long. Smallest crocodilian in the world. Okay, yeah. just a little shorter than I am, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it would be big enough for me. <laughs> yeah. But extremely endangered. These guys come from the Congo region of Africa, and it is very, very endangered. Uh, you know, there's not many of them left in that part of the world. Habitat loss being the biggest problem. Twenty-three species of crocodilians on the planet today. Most of them are threatened or endangered. Grant, I was um, just kind of reading through your website a little bit of, about how you guys acquire the animals. Would mm -hmm. you mind telling us how you well, get them? Every animal that you've seen so far was born and raised in captivity here in the U.S. Okay. Typically, any animal you see that's from a different part of the world, born here in the U.S., you know, zoological collections such as ourselves, we're basically licensed the same as a zoo, state, federally. We just don't have visitors. Everything we do is education, outreach, or off property. Okay. Most of our North American wildlife, which can range from otters and beavers and foxes and possums and raccoons and skunks, are all injured or orphaned and therefore non-releasable. Cool. Yeah. And I know we are going to meet some more animals later yes. in the show, but Chris, anything else, anything that you're excited about or new that's coming to the sports show this year? Well, bring the entire family because children 12 and under are totally free. Cool. Uh, parking, of course, is totally free. And our website, uh, pittsburghoutdoorshow.com, has the full list of exhibitors, seminar speakers, maps, everything you need to come plan your trip to the show.
Okay. Thank you so much, Chris, Grant, and we'll see you guys in just a little bit. And stay with us because we are going to take a look at some more amazing creatures from the wild world of animals ahead. And remember, you can also see them and much more at the Allegheny Outdoor Sports Show this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the Monroeville Convention Center. Also coming up, we're going to announce the winner of the Sport Outdoor Show Contest. One lucky person will win a behind-the-scenes tour of the wild world of animals display, four tickets to the trout pond fishing, four tickets for gold panning, $100 cash to spend at the show and a $50 giant eagle get go card. Stay with us to see who won this great prize ahead.